Hey everybody, Crystal Beaudry here with Crystal's Clean Kitchen, where we help make clean eating a lifestyle. So we are doing a short mini series that is all pumpkin recipes because you know, it's that time of year. And if you haven't checked out our previous episode, make sure to go do that because we did a delicious pumpkin muffin that had a streusel topping and it was so good. It was sugar-free and grain-free, keto approved. What's not to love about that? Well, in today's episode, we are going to be making a pumpkin bread that has a cream cheese frosting on the top and it is so good. Of course, it's keto approved. It is low carb friendly and you know, no sugar, <laughs> no grains. It's so good, you guys, you're going to love it. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Here's all of our ingredients that we're gonna be using. So to start with, we got two cups of almond flour. Now for our sweetener, we're gonna be using some urethritol monk fruit and I'm gonna use a fourth of a cup but you certainly could use a fourth to a half of a cup if you want. I just am not gonna make it super, super sweet. Um, I'm going to be using one cup of some pumpkin mixture. Now I normally buy 100% pure pumpkin, but I grabbed the wrong can, so <laughs> I'm still gonna use it though. Um, so either one is fine. For baking powder, we're gonna be using one tablespoon of baking powder, a half of a teaspoon of some salt, and for our pumpkin pie spices, we're gonna be using one table, teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, a fourth of a teaspoon of cloves, and an eighth of a teaspoon of the ginger and allspice. You could, of course, use a pumpkin pie spice blend. That would be fine also. We're gonna be using three eggs. And now for our topping on this, we have some Philadelphia cream cheese. I'm gonna use just four ounces, so a half of one of those cubes or sticks. And then for our sweetener, I, I normally don't use this brand, but Target has been all out of Aluos, and so I had to get this stuff from, cost, or from um, where did I get it? Amazon. So I'll make sure to link a good, I'll, I'll link it down below from Amazon, um, just in case you can't find it, because I know it's been hard to find lately. And then we'll just be thinning out our frosting with some heavy whipping cream, probably about a fourth of a cup of that. Okay, I'm so excited, let's get cooking. I'm gonna start with the dry ingredients. So this is two cups of almond flour. Here's the fourth of a cup of the sweetener. I'm gonna do the one tablespoon of baking powder. Now I know that's a kind of a lot of baking powder, but I want this to be really kind of fluffy and kind of poofed up a little bit, so that's why I'm doing that. I'm doing a half of a teaspoon of some salt, and then for our pumpkin pie spice, one teaspoon of the cinnamon. Now, you can, if you have the pumpkin pie mixture, like I said, you would just use maybe like one to two teaspoons of the pumpkin pie mixture. Okay, that was the half a teaspoon of nutmeg, fourth of a teaspoon of some cloves, and just a little pinch of the allspice and the ginger. Both of them have kind of a strong taste, so you just want a little bit. Okay, let's mix this up, and then we will do our wet ingredients. So the wet ingredients are very, very simple. We're just gonna be doing our three eggs and our cup of pumpkin. This pumpkin is gonna give it a lot of moisture, and it's also going to, um, stop it from needing some oil. All right, so we have our pumpkin, we have our eggs. We're gonna blend this a little bit and then add the dry ingredients. I always like to add them half at a time. Of course, you wanna scrape down the sides. And here is what it looks like. So I got this silicone mold um, from Amazon. I will make sure to link it down below. It is just, <laughs> I love it so much. It's so amazing. I use it all the time. It's perfect for keto cooking, just because sometimes keto cooking can really be sticky on the bottom when you're trying to pull up breads or anything like that. And silicone molds really help with that a ton. I don't have to put any parchment paper on it. And it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful mold you can use. Okay, now I'm going to bake, bake this in the oven, 325 degrees for about 50 to 60 minutes. And 
then we will prepare our topping. So I just pulled this out of the oven. It looks good. I'm gonna just do a little taste test, or not a taste test, but all right. That looks good. Okay, now I'm gonna just let it sit here and cool off completely, and I'm gonna go make the frosting. I put in my four ounces of cream cheese, and I'm gonna just blend it a little bit first to kind of break it up. Now I also had my cream cheese on the counter and just let it sit there for a little bit so that it could get nice and warmed up. Okay, I'm gonna grab the sweetener, put a little bit in at a time. Now I'm gonna start with just a tablespoon of sweetener um, because you definitely don't want it too sweet. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit more and then I'm gonna add in the heavy whipping cream. You wanna always be scraping the sides because it, especially with this sort of stuff, it, um, it can get kind of stuck on there. So just add a little bit of, cre of uh, the whipping cream first to start with, and then we'll see how thick it gets. All right, let's check the texture. And then we're also going to be tasting it a little bit and seeing if it needs more sweetener. You know, I'm gonna add just a little bit more sweetener. If you um, are not concerned about carbs and you don't really mind, like, and you don't mind different sweeteners, you could add um, maple syrup. That would taste really good with this too. Or if you wanted, you could add, I have uh, a maple syrup that's a simple syrup. You could add that also. Um, that would still give it a really good maple flavor and you could do that too. Okay, so I added one more tea tablespoon of some aluos and let's see how that does. Okay, let's do one more taste test. I am gonna add in the third tablespoon of the aluos, just because I did put in less sweetener when I was making the bread, um, so this will offset that really, really nicely. So I did end up using all three tablespoons of the aluos. Like I said, you could add a different type of sweetener if you wanted. If it's too thick to spread, then just add a little bit more heavy whipping cream. All right, that's the consistency that you want, if you can see that. Um, you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin. Um, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator while my bread is cooling down, just so that it is ready to go and it's nice and cold when I spread it. All right, so I've let this cool down completely. I pulled my frosting out of the fridge and I'm just gonna spread it over it. All nice. Doesn't this look beautiful? Uh -huh. yeah. So I'm going to pop it out and cut it up. So this is why I love this bread mold. It just pops right out. Oh, look at this, you guys. This is so beautiful. My kids are anxiously awaiting their peace. All right, you guys, so we let it cool down, we put the frosting on, and the kids are home from school now and they're so excited to try it. All right, give it a taste test. Hannah, let us know what you think too, honey girl. Is it good? What do you think? <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to stay tuned for some more pumpkin recipes because we have a lot more coming out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.